So the joys of being live. Everybody, feel free to wave at the camera because I'm a little behind in uh, lining stuff up. And here we go. And welcome to another exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. As you can see, I got a full house tonight, and I am honored, blessed, and grateful to have with me a team out of Tennessee that I have been following on TikTok. They come up with some of the best content and fun videos out there. They are a team to be rivaled. I'm telling you, if you're wanting to get that social media out there, you better get lessons from them. So I am going to introduce to you all Chanel, Jen, and Abigail, also known as Elite Fixin Paranormal. Thank you for us. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming on. And so I think I'll start with Chanel and let's have you guys introduce yourselves and give a little bit of your paranormal background. So I'm Chanel. I'm actually the co-founder of the team. Um, Samantha and I started the team in November 2018. So we're going on five and a half years of being together. Um, a little bit about me. So I have been interested in the paranormal since I was like a teenager and people always thought I was weird when I, they'd be like, well, what do you want to do? Well, like when you grow up and I'm like in my early twenties, like, well, I want to be a paranormal investigator. And I'm like, what? Um, so I, I believe that like some people have like a calling to this field and I think that I have a calling to it. Um, I just love everything about it and I love investigating and I love the science and Okay. Very cool. So who wants to go next? Abby. You got it. Dang it. You got okay. it, girl. Okay. Hi, I'm Jen. Um, as you can tell by my title, wait, other other way? Yes. <laughs> I am the newbie. Hey. Um, I've actually known Chanel and Sam for quite some time. Um but I am a mom. I've got three young kids and the timing just never lined up until uh, most recently. And I am so happy to be here. It's such an amazing group of women. Um, just, we have so much fun, whether we're investigating or just hanging out. And what's so fascinating about this team is we all come from all these different backgrounds and we have all these religious beliefs and spiritual beliefs. And it's just, the conversations we have 
like if we didn't actually fall asleep in the middle of them, we would be up for three or four days just talking about everything. But just, I guess a little bit about my uh, paranormal background. Um, I kind of always grew up a little sensitive to the paranormal. Um, I'm not saying I have any special gifts or anything, but I was always very much aware that that part of this world exists and we need to be cognizant of it. And um, I love the, all the different um, uh, science, all the science behind it. That's amazing too. Uh, gosh, okay, I'm talking too much. Go ahead, Abigail, your turn. Hi, uh, my name is Abigail and I am Chanel's stepdaughter. So I have uh, witnessed uh, and gotten to kind of sit on the sidelines of the Vixens ever since they started. Um, and, you know, I always knew that I was fascinated and stuff. It started off really young where, you know, my preferred movies at sleepovers were paranormal movies and stuff like that. I was always um, a very sensitive child to the energies in general. Um, but watching the Vixens, uh, you know, form and come together and, you know, waiting my turn, turn 18 and join them, I waited very patiently. Um, but it has been uh, a big, big just part of my life to watch them and then become a part of them. And um, yeah, I think it really just sparked my curiosity that much more because being able to actually go in and be a, a part of it, it is so much different than sitting back, just you know, knowing that you enjoy it, you know. Um, it opens a whole new world to actually have the opportunity to go out and and do that. And I would have never thought to do that uh, without the victims. So it's uh, been a really great opportunity. Very cool. So, Chanel, I know you're going to get asked this question a lot. And <laughs> I'm just going to get it out of the way real quick. How did you come up with the name Elite Vixen Paranormal? Was it because of EVP or did you just say, hey, this works out really cool. We can call ourselves EVP. Well, I cannot take credit for the name. That 100% goes to Samantha. Um, we did definitely play on the EVP for sure. Um, being an all -female, female team, when we were coming up with the name, um, we weren't 100% sure. Like we knew the P was going to be paranormal. Um, we played around with the E and the V. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if you ever like watched our live streams or seen any of our content, but we definitely had um, a lot of creative um, words for the V. <laughs> but um, I guess Samantha, when we were talking about that, she was like, wait a minute, because we were playing on the E and it was like, like we had like essence and, other things to me, it's like, wait a minute, what about like Elite Vixen? And we were like, oh my God, that's it. Um, and it's, yeah, like I said, it's a phenomenal name. Um, we decided when we went with the Vixen to go with the Foxhead logo and we copyrighted it because otherwise somebody else would have stole it. Because <laughs> it's such a great name. It is. And I got to admit, being paranormal investigator, whenever somebody uses the word elite or expert, I'm like, my first reaction is there are no elites or experts in the paranormal field. So, but I actually watched the video and I was like, I get it. This is really cool. And I had to, I started following and then I was like, okay. What other videos are on here? This is getting entertaining. This is more fun than scrolling through TikTok. Yeah, and you do. You like follow like I, every single time I think I post a video, it's like Michael like has liked it or commented or something. So we appreciate your support. Yeah, I'm happy to do it, and I'm like, I, I love it because. I mean, I, I kind of like the paranormal and the team atmosphere when it's more family style mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, but family sticks together. And so it's like when I see you guys posting like in the car or pulling up to somewhere, I'm like, oh, this is going to be entertaining. And I wish I could do that, but I'm always in the car on my own. 
Um, we typically tend to travel together. Um, now, Jen, she did on the investigation we went over the weekend. She traveled by herself, but she said, oh, how did you put it in the chat, Jen? What did you say about you traveling by yourself? It is the only time I get alone. Complete silence. I get complete control of the radio, my podcast and everything. I have 100% control on my rest stops. I don't know if you just saw my middle child just sneak in here. Oh. Yep. So, yes. So, I love y'all, but I do love my alone time. So. Oh, no. I got it. <laughs> so, I'm curious between the three of you that are here representing the team, who decides the criteria of where you go? Like what locations you go to? Is there a criteria that has to be met? Um, not necessarily. So I do all the scheduling for the team. Um, we really don't do residentials. Um, that's just our preference. And there's multiple reasons why we don't do residentials. Um, the biggest one being really a safety factor. But other than that, I mean, we're open really to try any location. And even if we go to location, it doesn't like have a lot of energy. Like that one time that we went, you know, we're also open to go back because you're not always going to get activity every single time you investigate. Um, so we don't really believe that if you go to a location one time and it's not active, that it's not haunted. Um, you got to go back more than once. So we're open to wherever. So Abigail, you being the stepdaughter who said, was anxious to get into this, what location were you like pushing to hope to get in on? To get in on, um, oh, what's it called? A What's the one you go to the most, Chanel? I know, yes, I've been wanting to go there. Uh, I remember watching them go there a lot, you know, when I was growing up. And going there was, um, I think uh, my dad went with y'all one time, and I was so jealous. So was where was that? It kind of, it was a little soft. Where was that? Uh, yeah. All now, right. what I'm really super excited for that's coming up is the Bell Witch. I'm the mansion excited. or the cave? It's the cave. The Bell Witch Cave. All right. Yeah, super excited for that. It's going to be a long night. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what kind of stuff I could crawl into. going to bring like, a little headlamp, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, what do you already know? <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I'm just like, yep, because I'm right there with you, sis. Just my little headlamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, you guys are so fun. So yeah, we, we pick on each other a lot. Like, okay. I, I mean, if, if you were a fly on the wall in our group chat, let me tell you. <laughs> about like, the things we just, like, even just today, like, what? <laughs> well, how we would all haunt each other, our victims of haunting. Yeah, yeah. First of all, there's there's a criteria, so we all are going to plan on learning this choreographed dance, and then whoever you know passes to the next life or you know passes on first, we all have to pick up the slack and do that choreographed dance, and then that person <laughs> who leaves this earth first is in charge of haunting all of us. So that's basically what the whole group chat was about today. And it was fantastic. Yeah. And it brought so much joy to my little heart today on a Tuesday, so. I am not sure I would want anyone to be in charge of haunting me. <laughs> I don't know, Michael, if, if you if you were, if you had the opportunity to haunt someone, who would it be and how would you haunt them? Would you be like a mean haunt or would you be like the goofy haunt? Like what would you do? I would probably be the soft, goofy one, but if they were just ignoring me, I would probably escalate it probably. and be like, why are you ignoring me? I'm totally going to, since you are 
every time you do an EVP, I'm totally going to do the, what is that song that was so annoying in Ghost? King Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. <laughs> Something like that. You wouldn't Rickroll them? I'd totally Rickroll them. That's the song I would play. Could you imagine being haunted by never gonna give you up? Never gonna give you up. We'd be like, dang it, Ken. Personally, I'd be a, I'd, I'd be a mean hat. I think I would I be mean. I think or I'd be a poltergeist. I think I'd like be extremely inconvenient. <laughs> but like lose your keys and hide your stuff kind of uh like a fairy like a fairy ghost a fairy ghost i love that i love that somehow i'm picturing abigail the one when everyone's in the steamy bathroom riding on the wind on the mirror <laughs> oh my god you be like everyone yeah. going oh my god really this is when I you're choosing the on the glass. <laughs> I'm putting footprints. Yeah, I'm eating all your food if I can. I don't know. That'd be footprints, yeah, that's that's possible, but I'd sure try. <laughs> you're gonna yeah. put, you're gonna put footprints on that glass, that fog glass. That's a lot of work, sis. You yeah. dead. Don't, don't work that hard. You're dead. Stop it. Like I gotta do something to entertain my days on the other Actually, side. I, I'm totally picturing Abigail doing the rockets to get the foot <laughs> up there and getting it on the mirror. <laughs> Yeah, see, he gets it. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna be the lazy haunter. <laughs> How about you, Chanel? Um, one second. He's not haunted by a a 13 year old ghost who needs his phone charged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would be first off. I'm gonna make lots of noise because I am dedicated to the science. So I'm gonna make sure that I am obnoxious and triggering all of the things. Right, like everybody's gonna know I'm around. Also, um, I think I would be the nice ghost that like would change toilet paper rolls. You yeah. know how people like sit their toilet paper on top of the like empty roll. I'm gonna change it because as a mom, I feel like I do that at least once or twice a day. Okay, so the opposite. I'm the one toilet paper off the roll right behind Chanel. <laughs> no, 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 no. But this is the important question here, y'all. Okay, toilet paper on top. Or behind? On top. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, some people, mm -hmm. it's a very polarizing question. Is the toilet paper, is it the top or bottom? I used well, to not Abby, care, but now I'm like hardcore on top. Uh, hardcore. Yeah, so Abby's dad is the same. Like it's got to be going on top. Got whereas it. I'm like, I don't care as long as it's not sitting on top of the empty toilet paper roll <laughs> on the holder. Like I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, as long as it's coming out. I don't care if it's top or bottom. I know. <sighs> so I bottom. will say, though, I do notice, though, I do put it on the top more than the bottom because it tends to start to droop down, and then I'm, like, constantly <laughs> rolling it back up. Yeah, it's superior. And you're learning that slowly but surely. <laughs> Lord help us! Here we're talking about toilet paper. So back to spirits. Um, but, no, but Abigail raised a really curious question. I haven't even thought about. Do spirits eat? That's look. That hit me mid mid sentence while I was saying it. I was like, could I eat everybody's food? Or I probably like. I don't know, hide all the good snacks in everybody's house. I don't know. I see I'm picturing myself haunting Chanel and my father, you know, <laughs> and just like as, as as inconvenient as I could be to them. Like I'd probably, uh, I don't know. You like eat all the crackers and leave the crumbs on the counter for them? Yeah, take my dad's shrimp out of his tank and put it in the other tank. And then he's like, I thought I had two shrimp in here. Nope. Sorry. You got <laughs> one today, three tomorrow. <laughs> You can come take the tarantula or whatever the hell heck is in that thing behind that you. Was, you. I, come get it now. I you told know, him to bring home. Chanel, to I love it the home. fact that you're pointing at your elite vixen paranormal screen and say there's a tarantula. We're all like, we see EVP paranormal. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a scorpion, by the way. Ooh. No, that's that's a hard no in my house. Out for mission, y'all. 
like so good. So my yes, friend, so there's hope for me, by the way. Had yeah. your snacks, you know, I'm coming for. Okay. So my friend Crossroads meets the ocean. Rose says they do eat, and it's the spirits eat the essence of the food. Oh. So like, does that mean it's still there? Like you just don't get the nutrients? The essence? No, I so what it means is like, the best part. you'll eat all the flavoring out of the food, and it'll just leave bland food behind. Just the flavor. That makes sense. So, like, the best parts of the food. Yeah. 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 I so mean, it, imagine yeah, having, you know, like, yeah. these he, really he sweet apples apple. and then going in, biting into it and being like, Damn it, Abigail. <laughs> Did you have to leave the apple behind again? <laughs> I can't taste this. Oh, well, too bad. Rocco. I probably like, I don't know, just hide everything important to everybody. I just be like, oh, well. You thought it was there, and now it's not. But I, I like Chanel's attempt, though, to be the nice ghost that's going to actually clean the house and earn their keep there <laughs> that's just like chanel well i wish that the ghosts that live here would clean up after themselves but i guess they don't make a mess but they could help they could help I was, like i've told them before to pick up a broom they just don't listen <laughs> it was i was just talking about my experience with our house ghost chanel like it i don't i don't know if it's just a ghost Y'all keep telling me it is. It growled at me. According to wow. Crossroads meets the Ocean Rose, they like alcohol. I'm down. Yeah. And coffee. And, and, and cigarettes. Okay, load it up. Let's go. <laughs> go. Be like, you wash the dishes, we'll leave you a glass. <laughs> Give me the bottle, please. That's one of the things like. I will always like do a tobacco offering. At locations, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's actually really, really respectful. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yep. Thing, like jails and stuff. You know, like just leave like a cigarette there and just be like, "Hey, here, I brought you some tobacco." Yeah. I mean, considering the experience we had this weekend, we, we did. Did you leave anything behind um, this last uh, weekend? I did not this past weekend. weekend, but typically I do. But I think this past weekend because. It was more like a paranormal slumber party than it was a paranormal investigation. Yeah. I'm so I jealous. Think of it. Y'all went go karting and everything. And oh, that's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you, everybody was loving the go kart video. <laughs> okay. First of all, I am savage on a go kart. Okay. And I was getting real frustrated that Jessica kept tapping her gosh darn brakes in front of me. And I just, I, I, I got some road rage on that go-kart track. I'm sorry. I may or may not, may not have uh, tapped Erica out of the way. And tap is- were hard. so serious with that. Like everybody's faces were just, like the, the competition was written on all four of your faces. And then like when Erica, cause hers wasn't going as fast as she's like bringing up the rear, she's just there doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> compared to the rest of y'all. It was, that's why she was my favorite. Like, <laughs> oh man I'm like I'm picturing Jen going if a go-kart triggers her into road rage why do you think I, I drive I'm alone I'm curious about the road <laughs> okay. why do you think I drive alone what do you, what do you think get, get out of my way get, get out of my way just, it's like just, I'm protecting y'all just I, I just I just let me go just open road so now I'm starting to understand why Jen is the first one everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like just not, everybody get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie. Not going to lie. Almost beat Chanel and Sam this weekend. Almost. Almost. And I think it was because I took an extra, like a little extra time at the Bucky's uh, coffee station. So I think that's what. Oh, you guys got Bucky's over there? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Isn't that like just heaven? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. It's a game changer for sure. For sure. Bucky's man, you can get everything there, man. It's I cool. know. 
I, I tend to now, funny enough, is schedule a lot of my investigations around, is there a Bucky's on the route? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I kind of... Chanel, Chanel, come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, no, okay. I think make a note of that. She wants Bucky locations. <laughs> that is how, okay. I'm writing that down, Jen. Look for a Bucky's near every investigation. We're actually supposed to be getting one in Murfreesboro. No. What? No. Uh. Mm -hmm. no. So I know of the one in Texas, and I know there's one in Florida by mm -hmm. what? Oh, what is that city? It, God, it, Pensacola. It's okay. near Pensacola. But I did not know they were in Tennessee. They're popular. Yeah, I think Tennessee has the largest one now um, in Sevierville. I think that's now the largest one, unless they've built another one that's bigger since that one. Really? Okay. I've driven past that one because there's already one on the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I haven't been inside of that one. Well, looks like I need to go on my little Bucky's World Tour then, by Sevierville. And for all of you who have never seen a Bucky's or know what we're talking about, let's just say you walk in that store and you are instantly in a euphoric state of. <gasps> Oh my god. How do you get to see all of this before I leave. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's almost like I want okay, this is what I'm thinking. Bucky's has a proprietary bl blend of like pheromones that they release into this into the air. Right? And it just it brain fogs you and you're just like, I I have to look at everything. I need to I need to spend hours in here. And you know what? I'm I'm gonna buy something. Like it's happening. I am gonna use the bathroom and then I'm going to, to buy I, 15 snacks, 12 pounds of Bucky's chips. Yes, please. Thank you. Like and then you leave there with like your hoard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, they got and, it. And the even better thing is is beyond the store is there are like a hundred gas pumps. So oh, you yeah, never yeah. have to wait in line. <laughs> Although this weekend oh, I will to wait for a parking spot. So a well, parking spot, yeah. But I'm talking when you're like pulling in and going, I I need gas. It's like you can pretty much just pull right up and start. It's true. It's true. They've got it. They've got it figured out. Man. That is one smart beaver, guys. Come on. And a fun fact is every Bucky's in Texas is on Bucky's Boulevard or Bucky Street. They they put the name to the street that connects it to the highway. So it's like, yeah. So when you go, well, where's Bucky's? Well, look at Bucky's Boulevard off the highway. Yeah. There it is. Wow. That is brilliant in how they have determined making it so easy to find. That's clever. See, they've got it. They figured it out and we're too late to the party. We should have invested in it years ago. So. Okay, we can go billionaires now. Say that again, Chanel. We'd be billionaires. I know. I know. Who, who would have ever thought building a large store that pretty much has bar uh, ours has barbecue because we're Texas. Yep. It has fudge. Yep. It has a bakery, has a wall of jerky, wall yep. of candy, wall of nuts, mm -hmm. wall of any snack you can imagine, a whole wall of drinks, got the coffee station right in the middle. Yep. It's like, man. They figured it out. They figured it out. So. And on top of that is the Bucky shirt for every mm -hmm. holiday. Or, or the bathing suits, man. I saw bathing suits there the other day. I was like, man. Like, oh, Abby has one. I do. You do I have, have one. I have two of them. See? See? She smelled the pheromones. 
they are releasing pheromones into the air. It's making just actually, actually, to be fair, my sister peer pressured me into matching with her. Mm. It's fine. You still bought it. You drink I, the Kool Aid. And, Sis, you drink the Kool Aid. I know. I'm I it was pie. not a hard arm twist. <laughs> No, it was not. It, uh, it, all it took was, we should match. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There no, you go. It's funny. Memphis Ghost Hunters is saying it's a miniature Walmart. And I'm like, no. It it's is better. So much more than that. <laughs> yeah. It's better. So, anyway, we digress. <laughs> this is our group chat. Like, welcome to our group chat, Michael. Basically. Hey. <laughs> and full disclosure, did I not tell you before we went live that we may or may not talk about any particular subject? Anything's going to go. <laughs> and here we are talking about Bucky's. We're cool. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so dad jokes next, right? Is that what we're doing next? Oh, then Erica needs to be here for those. I know we need Erica for her dad jokes for sure. She's a those. Golly, she's so clever with those. I can't even. And her puns, Lord help me with those puns, Lord. <laughs> she's so funny. You never know because she's so quiet and so reserved. And then she opens her mouth, and like the spew of hilarity comes out, and you're like, Did that just come out of her. <laughs> so shocking. <laughs> Well, we'll have to get her on the next episode. Absolutely. Oh, he trusts us, y'all. He's going to have us back. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. We got, what, 30 more minutes to embarrass ourselves? Let's, let's go. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking Abigail's got something on her mind. She's over there, like, really deep in thought. That's just me in general. <laughs> I'm always deep in thought. But... I'm actually, you know, so I got, I had to sit this, this past um, investigation slash sleepover out. I actually uh, took a little break from the team for a little while because I got some promotions going on at work. But, um, you know, I am curious, uh, you know, and I'm back and active again. So uh, I'd like to hear about the sleepover and, and what y'all did this past weekend. Yeah, we, we, I do recall commenting. I would love to hear about this on the show. And <laughs> Chanel promised and said, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, okay. So I'm going to let Jen go because, um, fun fact, this was Jen's first investigation. So let's try let her talk about it. Ooh, okay. I'm going to put you on the spot. I know. Well, I Welcome thought. the world of the newbie. I know. Breaking in the newbie really hard. It's fine. It's fine. I thought that, um, of course, you go into any investigation a little scared, a little, of course, apprehensive. Like, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Um, you don't really know who you're, who or what you're opening yourself to. So there's always that kind of, um, you must stay guarded in a way, but you also need to figure out a way to, like, keep yourself open enough to where you still are able to have these experiences. So I thought the entire investigation was amazing. I thought it was a beautiful introduction for me to the team. Um, the home was very giving and forgiving. Um, the spirit, we did come in contact with two spirits and Chanel, if, if I'm saying too much and you want to elaborate on one thing, just, you know, time me out. No, go for it. Um, we came in contact with the spirit. So right next to the house, um, it's right off of the railway line in Oxford. And um, this first spirit basically uh, taught us what was it, the railroad schedule. And yeah, yeah, yeah it was so um, Estes method. Um, Sam was the one who was blindfolded and was listening to the spirit box. And we were the ones um, asking questions. And um, yeah, Oksana, it was great. It was great. It was awesome. Thank you. Um, and so Sam was actually intelligently responding to the questions we were putting out there and the train rolled by and the spirit said railroad train. And it was unbelievable. And then it kept saying two, two, 11. And then, um, there were some other names that came through. I don't know if that was more Chanel. You can tell me from interpreting this incorrectly. Um, 
that might have been a little bit of interference because we weren't able to necessarily contact those individuals later in the evening. But it said two, and then it said 11. And it was about nine o'clock when we made that first contact. And at 11 p.m. is when the next train rolled through. So, and it was really super fascinating. Our um, music box was going off like crazy. It was amazing. Um, there was one point where, actually, I guess it was three spirits, right? Because mm -hmm. we had the bedroom where um, we came in contact with an individual um, who I felt like that was a little all over the place. Chanel, I know that you were the one who was um, in Estes at the time. And we were all kind of taking turns, asking questions. Um, it was specifically in an upstairs bedroom that had a closet that seemed to have a lot of energy around it. And it felt like there might have been a situation with some sort of forbidden love and maybe um, a bad outcome from that forbidden love. Um, so that was, that was interesting. And then Janice, our other team member, we were all upstairs on the upstairs landing and she had the dowsing rods and they were very effective in that area. Um, although there is a small Creek that does run directly past the house. And we found out pretty early on in the investigation that the dowsing rods were very much attracted to the Creek outside. I believe all of us, didn't we try the dowsing rods downstairs? I did not. I don't think Sam and I did the dowsing rods, um, but you, Rachel, Janice, and Jessica. And I think at one point in time, didn't Erica also? You know, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, we've kind of slept a little bit since then. Yeah, a little bit. And then, you know, it takes a, a while just to process everything, you know. Um, but yeah, we had a great um, interaction upstairs. Uh, um, the individual whom we came with contact with, uh, from what we were able to gather, um, had enjoyed alcohol, <laughs> also enjoyed smoking tobacco. Uh, Chanel and Janice both had really strong tobacco. Like they kept saying it smells like tobacco breath, tobacco breath. Now, mind you, I'm sitting not a foot away from Janice and I'm not experiencing any of this. Um, and, you know, the individual indicated that he had hit his head and doesn't remember much. And then we kept trying to go down this road of asking more questions. And eventually we got to the point where, where we were like, well, hey, hey, man, like, are you just done talking to us? And immediately the dowsing rods were just like, yes leave me alone. Do not talk to me anymore. <laughs> you have and that, and the pajama party story. took over. <laughs> yeah. And then we tried a little bit more. We, we, there's this really cool, uh, room in the, um, the mansion, excuse me, in the mansion. It, I think it was like a nursery because now it's a walk-in closet. That's off of the main bathroom. Yeah. Off of the main room. And it's got like this really cool, like, it's like an ante room, but it's like double, like almost floor to ceiling original windows. And I was thinking because it was connected to a, it was like a, like I said, an ante room that was connected to that main bathroom and another secondary bedroom that maybe it was a nursery. I don't know. That was the best thing. And then, so we, we took our boo bear in there or a boo buddy, excuse me, <laughs> boo bear so sweet but boo buddy in there we unfortunately we didn't make any sort of contact there um so and then the sleepover took over and we just we felt like that the house had given us a lot and we were so appreciative and it was a wonderful experience and it was it was great it was great of course we slept with all the lights on okay call us babies whatever whatever don't hate it, don't hate. We're going to get no. this. <laughs> I, I've done it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You just, dude, we were just talking to someone who was getting tobacco breath on Janice, and I was sleeping less than five feet away from there. You think I'm going to sleep with the lights on? Heck yeah, I'm going to sleep with the lights on. Like, so, but no, it was wonderful. It, it was great. So, yes, we had a little bit of cat ball action um, on the bedroom 
on the bed in the bedroom that had the closet that had a lot of energy coming out of it, we tried to debunk it. Um, but I think Chanel, jury's still out a little bit about that because I don't know. Can you say more about the cat ball? Um, yeah, it was on the bed with the, the Jack, you remember the bed with the closet and, um, I literally had my boots on and I'm trying to jump and bounce and make sure that I wasn't setting it off. Um, but we did see what was it? The one, was it the one like somewhere where Janice did? I think the, if I remember correctly, I think it set it off. So I don't, I think you're right. I don't think we were ever able to truly debunk that. You know, that just means we got to go back and figure it out again. Oh, darn. We got to go back. I know. So yes. That's where the music box kept going off and any activity around the stairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy music box activity. I'm so sad I missed all this. So, so I just thought one? of an interesting question for all three of you. <clears throat> we were talking about spirits, you know, being a spirit and, you know, how we would haunt. But my question to you is what piece of equipment would you make your preference and only communicate through? Cool. Spirit box. Why the spirit box? You like I to would, talk, don't you? Do what? I said you like to talk, don't you? Huh? Yes, I, I would just want to, I don't know. I feel like I'd be that kind of ghost that would like, live a hundred different ghost lives like you know i tell one person oh my name is melissa and i'm from i don't know kansas and i'm just visiting this old spooky house or the next day i'm peter and i'm from texas <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i just mess with people i think <laughs> i love how abigail is like going with the whole Gender is out of the question as a spirit, so I'm gonna oh, play yeah. both roles. I go. play all roles. I bark for the spirit box. Now I'm a dog. <laughs> Ghost dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that would be interesting, especially to do to the repeat people. Do it in the same voice, but like change your name and where you're from, and be like, and have them go. Weren't you this last time? Nope. Oh, like, totally <laughs> well, yeah. Chanel, I don't know if you saw the guest book. Did you have a chance to read through the guest book at the house? Um, I did when I was like buying and it, just kind of like seeing who all was there. Yeah, yeah. So there were teams there previously who had some some similar and some different experiences. Um, so it would be interesting to go back and figure out. You know, maybe we're talking to the same people or we've got an Abigail spirit on our hands, you know. <laughs> we're ministers. So, Jen, what's going to be your equipment choice? Uh, the Ovulus, I think. Really? Because I want my message heard and I want people to know what I'm saying. So. Yeah, but that's true, but the obvious isn't it just like one or two words at a time? So you're oh, going to be putting a lot of effort into getting that sentence out. Uh, Michael, they can wait for me. They're there to see me, <laughs> and they can wait for me, okay? If they want to talk to Jen, they will wait to talk to Jen, okay? I, I could just see people with the obvious going, I am, and they're going, and then, like, watch you pause, and they're like, you are what? Come on. We waited this long. You know. And you're like, let me have this little fun, people. <laughs> I feel like I might also be able to just play, like, a cliche ghostly role, because Abigail sounds like the name of a ghost. Well, there is like Abigail very, Adams. Old, like an old, timely name, but I don't know. I just... I'm going to tell people I'm, you know, 2004. Nah, I'm from 1768 or something. <laughs> there you go. You're pretty close, actually. Yeah. 1669, Salem Witch, Pro Salem Witch Trials. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to say witch crops. What, where, where were you? Salem witch trials. <laughs> I, I said the wrong thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. I, I was thinking that that would be interesting. Witch crops going, wow. You know, who, who knows? Maybe there was witch crops out there somewhere. I come from a long, long line of women witches as well. Um, my mom told me, like, Dating way back, like all, like you know, all the women and, and her family were Wiccan for the most part. I mean, of course, we have some Christians mixed in there too, but yeah. I remember and the then there was Chanel. Yes. I would communicate through. Gosh, that's such a hard question. Um, because like I don't know. So. I guess if I had to pick something, I'm gonna go with like a trigger item. So like a cat ball or a REM pod or a periscope or something along those lines. Um, you know, that way then like, you know, it's, just, it's fun. Every time that that happens, it's like I've been investigating for a million and a half years, but every single time a cat ball hits or a REM pod hits and you see those lights light up, like for me, like it's so exciting every time that it happens. Um, so I think that that's what I would choose. I'm with you. I, I would choose the cat ball and I would especially like when they do the cat ball next to the REM pod next to another mm -hmm. piece, only mess with the cat ball <laughs> and make them be like, no, touch this equipment. I'm like, no, I am here oh. to communicate. This is how I'm communicating. Get over it. <laughs> well, and I've seen that happen where a spirit will be drawn to like the cat ball and it will only communicate through the cat ball. And like exactly what you're talking about, that scene has happened where you have the K2 next to it, or you have another piece of equipment and it's still, it's just the cat ball that's hitting and it's hitting like intelligently. And so, you know, sometimes I feel like ghosts do just have their own preference. And like I said, I've seen it. Yeah. And just to let you know, Nikki Cameron is a paranormal investigator. I believe she's elevated herself to paranormal investigating now out of Australia. Sweet. So Aussies are in the house. Yay, welcome. <laughs> That's so, so cool. You know, in case you guys want to do a road trip. Yeah, road trip to Australia. <laughs> Why not? That's true. You know, that's an interesting that's an interesting tactic from Memphis Ghost Hunters. If we did like a um, like a pure not like a period piece where we went on site and we found you know period outfits and you know did our best to replicate the way life was back then and see what type of responses we get. Would we just dress uh, like the part, or would it be like a role play thing? Like we go in there and, and we're both. You know, we. I feel like we'd have to be really committed. So that would be cool. Yeah, just that be would careful be where and when you're going because there were certain time frames when women had no voice, so it would make for a very long boring investigation um, or it stirs some people up and make them very mad so yeah, yeah, I'll start speaking old time politics and hear one of the ghosts come over the spear box like uh, women shouldn't have an opinion yo what if we showed an ankle oh my god oh my ankle? that might be a little too far Jen hold on <laughs> too much ankle I'm sorry uh, yeah. I, I love That's watching the period the period movies and when the ladies would lift up their skirts to show the ankle and all the guys are like, I can't look. I'm like, it's an ankle, dude. Really? See, ankle. We, <laughs> we don't want to bring the spirit home, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we tell them to stay. That's that's what, that's what we tell them to stay. They can't leave. Yeah. You can't follow these ankles. Anyway, <laughs> no, no. These ankles are not for you. 
I like how Abigail draws the line in the sand at the ankles. She's like, you can file anything, but not the ankles. She, she's, yeah. she's a good girl. She's a good girl. Okay. I am. I am. A menace to society, but good. Yeah. Music is a really good trigger. It is a very good trigger. Especially on military bases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I got all the ideas now, y'all. Uh, and it's funny because we don't, you know, don't think about it, but I was on a military base that was active during Vietnam, training helicopter pilots. And we're in the middle of a cadence. And I'm the only male on the property with two women. And there's a male voice in the middle of the cadence says, pause it. Wow. And we never paused it because we didn't hear it. And I was like, man, this is really interesting that, you know, this spirit, you know, is aware of modern terms. And somebody goes, "Um, in the age of Vietnam, they did know how to pause equipment. (laughs) I was like, oh, good point. Didn't think about that. (laughs) <laughs> They're not that old, Michael. Good Lord. Oh, man. Well, because it's hard to think, you know, we're so used to like yeah. electronic technology now. When did terms start, you know? And being in 80s, I, I always thought it was the 80s was with cassette players, pause, or the 70s with the 8 track. Mm-hmm. Could you even pause those? And I never thought about the 60s being able okay. to pause equipment. Yeah, pause a vinyl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I feel like we need the rainbow. The more you know, do 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 do. This has been a public service announcement. <laughs> Ghosts in the 1960s do know how to pause, <laughs> they also know how to party. So they let's, eat. yes, they do. So, and that was the only that night. That was the only kind of um, interaction you got, or did you get anything else? Uh, no, we actually got cat ball responses on a tile floor of a slab flooring of the building in the lobby. The cat balls, like one, would go off, not the other one, during. Um, I think it was taps. We were getting that to go off. And so, and then we would occasionally get EVPs. But the most fun, (laughs) and I I actually laugh about this with people because I was with the team. And for two nights, we made it our mission to figure out what this noise was because we were hearing like a electronic doll laughing but none of the dolls in the doll room had batteries or if they had the pull cord didn't work so we're like where is this coming from we would we spent the first night with the full team almost two hours in one room listening every 12 to 15 minutes this sound going off and going in a straight line going into the corners, going into a circle. And we never, the entire two hours, everybody could agree on what the source was. Everybody was constantly hearing it from different places. That's That's awesome. That's so cool. But yeah, it's the one time I laugh and I go, Yes, as an investigator, I spent two hours trying to find the source of a sound that normally we would probably have given up in like half hour, 45 minutes. I, it's like we really could not believe we sat there for two hours. And then the ne- and then we came back the following Friday, I think it was, and there was four of us. And spent another hour and a half trying to isolate the sound wow. of this laugh. And we're like, we sat there. We finally looked at each other and go, 
how sad is this that we are spending all of this time on this one thing and everybody else here is getting ignored? <laughs> you're just doing the science, though. Like, trying to locate the sound and all of that. It's, you're just doing science. That's yep. just crazy. Yeah. I mean, we, we heard a squeaking sound, and then it turned out... Like by near the end of the night, we finally figured out it was the little portable air conditioning unit in y'all's room. Oh, I hate when that happens because mm -hmm. you're like, yes, we had this great evidence. So then you're like, no, it's that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a letdown every time that that happens. And it's like, oh, man. But like as you know, investigators and specifically like science, using that scientific approach, like that's what we have to do, you know? And it's like, oh, it's so heartbreaking when it happens, but. Yeah. Part of it, you gotta do both. I did have one location where I had just got done watching a paranormal show and was like, had the debunking in my head, <coughs> kind of like the science of like you're saying, and this little rocking chair that had a doll in it was rocking. And I was like, stop rocking. And it stopped. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I was like, wait, did I bump this? And, you know, is that what started it? But, you know, what made it stop? And we're like, we're looking and we're like, well, there is air conditioning on. So I'm like looking at the air conditioning, how it's flowing in the room and going, nope that's not it so i gently bumped it i'm like well yeah i could make the rocking happen again but then i would go now stop and it would keep rocking i was like i could never get it to stop on command so i was like huh. i half debunked it <laughs> huh okay and it's silly Perfect. the smallest sound we're like okay what else could it be you know so I'm curious, do you guys use the flashlight? We have a flashlight. I, I call it the Yankee flashlight um, because it doesn't like it. Um, the connections aren't good. So it's really good as a trigger item. So we can use that to, as a trigger item because um, it's so sensitive to movement that it's going to even go off. So yeah, we can do that. So we are actually getting close to the hour, and I know you guys are on the East Coast, being in Tennessee. So you're in the Eastern time zone, so it's an hour later than it is for me. Are you guys... Central. Oh, you're in Central time? Mm-hmm. I always thought Tennessee was in the line of... Because it's so weird, the line for East Eastern versus Central. So I was like... Part swear. of our state is. Part of our state is mm -hmm. Eastern. Like, yeah, half of, yeah, half, like, isn't it uh, Chat and Knox? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're in Eastern. Yeah. Okay. Well, so but, <laughs> are you guys needing to go, or do you guys want to chit-chat a little bit more? I'm good. I'll I'm probably going to hop off here and shower because I got work in the morning. Yeah. I've had a lot of fun, and I really appreciate you for having us on. And, well, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful you were able to come on, Abigail, and it was fun having you on. Of course. Well, I'm going to hop off here. I love you, girls. Bye. Bye. Oh, so now that Abigail's gone, let's get to the real show. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody needs to leave, it's me. I'm the one who needs to leave. Are you kidding me? Lord help me. <laughs> Lord. Oh. I, can hang no, uh, a few minutes. I still have kids that are up for some reason, and we got, like, testing. It's like, y'all need to be in bed. <laughs> oh, gosh, that TCAP testing. They're all, like, mom's preoccupied. Now's the time to strike. Because she we, didn't do anything. You saw my six-year-old come in here? Oh, we saw. Oh, this is my kids, like, and I have mine pretty well trained, but they still 
just be going by those moves. Oh yeah, I can. I watch them walk by. At least they're quiet. The leg. <laughs> do, do you see the eye twitching? It's fine. Yeah. This is normal. This is normal. You know. So my next question, and it's a I'm really curious about is, and I'm going to preface it with it can be in the U.S. or international. I'm going to open the floor to it. If you could haunt any location, where would it be? Mine would definitely be anywhere in the United Kingdom. Um, any of those castles, that is like a parallel bucket list for me is to do like a tour of like all castles in the United Kingdom. I will do it one day. You know, that is a good, I don't know. Because my knee-jerk reaction is I would haunt my children's dreams is what I would do. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you do that already? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Chanel. She's going to be so mad at me after this. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, no, I. you know what? I'd probably go somewhere warm and tropical and find me a little beach cave somewhere and just get confused in the mermaid lore or something like that. And honestly, that's that I would I would call that home. So it yeah, it'd be like the Bell Witch Cave, but like Costa Rica, you know. So bring your ovulus. You'll wait 12 hours for a whole sentence. <laughs> You wait twelve hours for a sentence. Oh, that's great. So sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm with you. I'm like, I'm I'm torn. It's like, I I would be the one that's like summertime, being a cool place, like maybe Alaska or something where it's nice and cool. Mm -hmm. And then in the winter, maybe go somewhere tropic, right? And like just alternate back and forth depending on the season. How cool oh, that that's be? it. Be a seasonal. Be the a snow spring in one area, summer in another, winter in another, <laughs> fall. Yes, yes, yes. You find someone with good ankles, Michael, and you just latch onto their ankles. <laughs> Follow the ankles. Follow the ankles. <laughs> I hit a wall, y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I could just see the, the Wizard of Oz too. All of the ankle rope. All of the ankle <laughs> <path>. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> I'm just picturing the little people too looking at you like, why? You have all this space. Are you only going to this one oh, little path? We're just going to go for the ankles. That's all I need. Just, just for the ankles. Just little ankles. So, ugh. isn't that like every kid's nightmare, though? Where, or like, it's part of like every like classic horror movie. And I'm like specifically thinking about that movie Sixth Sense, right? Where, yeah. you know, they get grabbed by the ankles by the spirit underneath the bed. Like, that spirit went for the ankles. I can go for the ankles too. I'll travel with you, you know. So, yeah, isn't that paranormal activity movies too? Is it? I'm it's sure it is. A big thing where they just get yanked off the bed and dragged out of the room. Okay, now I'm not gonna be that old, oh. but as a ghost, as a spirit, I will just attach to your little ankle bone and just be like, "Take me." Okay, first class. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're flying coach. No, thank you. New person. Here we go. <laughs> you know, that, that's, the, that's the one interesting thing when we think about it. With all the incidents that have happened with planes, I do not know that I've ever heard of a plane being haunted. I mean, we've heard of underwater, like, uh, uh, what are they called? Um, ships that sank. Right. We've heard of those places having some sort of, you know, 
energy about it. Um, I mean, yeah, but I'm like, I, I was just thinking about that as we were talking about that going, I've never heard of anyone saying there was a ghost next to me on the plane. Oh, wow. For yeah, you. I don't think I've heard of that either. But I mean, I could see how that could be a thing though. Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at the military graveyards. I'm yeah. like, I, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, I would want to haunt a plane because I could go all over the world. But could you Great. leave the plane is the question. You know, that's the show Ghost. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen that on, uh, I think it's on Paramount Plus right now. I think CBS runs it by us. But so that's the preface of the show is like they die on the property, so they cannot leave the property. Oh, right. Yeah, they yeah. hit a wall and they're bounced right back into the property. And one was attached to a car. She could only go six feet from the car and then back into the car. Oh, that's so sad. And so that would be interesting, you know, if we could trap them into... The place where it happens, you know, how much freedom would you give them? I guess you could always just open a portal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Or a mirror. Put them in a mirror. And then you could release them else. I don't, I don't I'm just throwing, y'all, I'm just, I'm throwing stuff out there. I'm getting too comfortable, Chanel. The, the nervousness <laughs> is gone. Now it's... That's okay. We've got we've got raw Jen right now. Oh, it's right. raw. It's live and it's like, raw. You, you really might want to end this. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the sleepover all over again. <laughs> no, I'm just lying. I know, I know, I know. We're good. I, was like, I love though that you're getting comfortable. That you know, because you've only done a, a handful of these, so you're getting comfortable on them, and that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could just see Jen now. She's going to go on the next show and she's going to be like, you don't give me as much freedom as that other guy. <laughs> I don't like this show anymore. <laughs> Can no, we go you, back to that show? <laughs> you should have seen me on the first one. The first one I was like. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you are giving off serious Wednesday vibes right now. Oh, I Yeah. <laughs> Blonde Wednesday. It's fine. It's fine. I'll take it. Hey, she's a cool chick. I'll take it. Yes, but oh, I, I just got your next video, Chanel. Can Jen do the dance? Oh no. Nope. No. <laughs> no, she, don't give me that she's look. Maybe Wednesday. So can she oh. do the Wednesday dance? Sis, no. Mm -hmm. I mean oh. there's there's a plethora of oh. videos to watch to learn it. Would you stop, Michael? Me, though, <laughs> I could, would, <sighs> so Memphis Ghost Hunters is wanting to know what's your guys' takes on orbs? We talked about this Saturday, didn't we? We did. Um, yeah. We did. So my personal take is um, a little controversial can be. I might get myself in trouble, but it is rare that I'm going to be impressed by an orb. Mm -hmm. Very rare. Um, because, like, when you look at physics, yes, balls of energy do exist, right? And when you look at orbs and, like, pictures or whatever, you know, like, there's droplets of air. There's dust particles on your camera that you can't even see with the naked eye. Um, so it's got to be special for me to be like, oh, that's interesting. Otherwise, 99% of the time, I'm going to chalk it up to dust. Yeah, but how many bus, no, bus, dust <laughs> do you see going across and then going up and then going it depends the on the airflow because it can do that. Um, even your own breath can manipulate dust. And that's something that, like, I think a lot of people don't take into consideration is, oh, well, the airflow goes like this. Yes, but your breathing can manipulate the air. Yes, but I would challenge that by saying there is no air in the building. 
but there's always air and you breathe it. No, I mean, there's no like air movement. It's like just stale air. It would depend on the location, I would think. So there's a lot of variables that go into this. Um, so when you're talking like a completely closed off, like airtight thing, okay, yeah, there's not going to be air movement in there. But if you're talking like an old building, they were, you know, especially like if it's from 150 years ago, there's airflow through all that thing, no matter how sealed it is, because it's so old. Um, and especially given like a location bigger than like an airtight, like, container you're gonna have some sort of airflow oh my air might be dying speaking of air <laughs> um you know you're gonna have some sort of like airflow and i just think that there's a lot of factors that go into it um i have to see multiple images can you still hear me with this one perfect i want to double check because it was just the one um i don't know like i said it just I, I got to see multiple images and I'm not just going to look at like one picture and be like, oh, oh, yeah, you know, I just, let's see. Don't forget pets have dandruff, that too. People have dandruff. People have like skin cells, you know. Actually, that's what the majority of dust is actually, believe it or not, is yeah. dead skin cells. <laughs> so, and like, even if, um, you know, you Think sit there about and you that. Next time you breathe in at an old that's right. location. That's right. You're breathing in dead people's skin. <laughs> Um, but I mean, even like, you know, being there, like scratching, like you're scratching loose dead skin and things like that. And these are just things that people don't really take into consideration. Um, like, so for me, that's how, that's my stance on it. All right, Jen, you're the newbie. Let's I go. I, I agree with Chanel when it comes to like still pictures in terms of orbs and things like that, it would really have to be something that would just be like, yeah, Ooh, okay. You got my attention. I think my definition kind of broads a little bit more, like gets a little bit broader when it comes to video. Um, just because it, it's all circumstantial, correct? Mm -hmm. and yes, there's dust, there are bugs, there's airflow, there's cross airflow, there's pets, there's dandruff, there's dead sin scales, there's all, all the things. But it, I think with video, when you really see something that seems to have some sort of intelligent movement, that's that's where I'm like, mm, I could see that being something beyond a little tiny fruit fly. Or, um, in fact, that's funny you asked that, Michael, because I I feel like I caught an orb on my phone the other morning, and I meant to send it to you, Chanel, so that you could look at it. You do too. I do. I'll do it right after this. But, um, you know, it was four o'clock in the morning. I'm in my kitchen. I'm making a cup of coffee. I'm, you know, shooting a little bit of video for a funny real idea I had for my own personal page. And, um, you know, just I, I feel like maybe the first thing that was captured was more orb like where the second one could probably be explained as maybe um, we just had some renovations done in our kitchen so maybe like leftover construction dust or something but the first one i feel like i would have seen that and i would have given recognition to that so yeah. i don't know I, i'd love to take credit for the question jen but it was actually this ghost hunters that brought that <laughs> question in and what's funny is he knows my stance He's just over here being controversial. <laughs> he is. He's, he's stirring that pot. I know. He's going to be held for it later. Oh, I swore. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> uh, I love when people say that. I'm like, you did? How? What? I'm like, <laughs> I, I seriously, I'm like, that word is like, yeah, that one is totally not on my radar for bad words. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, some people consider it. Some people don't. I'm just like, and you know what? Thank you. We appreciate that, Jack. Um, you know, I don't know, because I just try to be like, like when I go live on my like, Facebook and TikTok, like I give the like caveat before I even start. We're going to cut. We cuss around here. Um, so, <laughs> but when I'm on other people's show, I'd like to be respectful. <laughs> No, it's funny because I go the extra mile not to because I'm like, in case a kid is watching, 
Right. And I was on location and it was pitch black and I stepped on a car, one of those little toy cars and it went sliding and hit something. And I was like, what the shit? And I was like, <laughs> sorry, people. I just cussed. I got a little freaked out for a moment. Sorry. <laughs> totally apologize. Cause I'm like, it's alive. I can't take it back. And I was like, right. I you can't, can't. once it's there, it's there. Start over. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, it's out there. It is done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I set my, so like when we go live on TikTok, I always set the setting of it that um, like it's 18 plus just in case. Cause I'm going to practice protect the children from the things that we talk about as vixens because they are not kid appropriate no i mean you never know what we might capture on our facebook live in terms of an interaction that might really explore some really dark subjects um yeah. so you just you have you, you have to be careful i mean parents are allowed to parent however they want to parent i'm not judging y'all i'm just saying that sometimes it can get dark so it there can you I had a little girl at a location I didn't even hear. And all of a sudden, my messenger is like going nuts. And I'm like, why are all y'all messaging me? You know I'm live. I can't read this. And then I had a teammate message me. And I go, okay, this person does not message me unless it's important. So I stopped the live. Mm -hmm. read the message and she's like you need to go back you there was a girl and i'm like there was a what and then i went back and i was like yeah there was a girl's voice that said leave me alone oh and i oh. came out of the kids room of this hotel and move on and somebody said they heard when i entered the hallway a spirit call my name okay. i never heard it but then what was interesting is like two months later, somebody got a hold of the video, was watching it, and said, There's a kid at the very end before you leave. Here's a still shot of it. And I looked at it and a friend of mine in Temple taught me if you can trace the outline of a person, you got a spirit there. And I could. A little kid underneath the cupboard holding his legs. I did Aww. a perfect trace of it. And I was like, I totally missed that. Oh, Baba. And then what's even more fun is six months later, I go back. And there was three taps on my shoulder before all of this started. Aww. Do you guys have that happened? Or you go and you watch footage and you're like, okay, yeah, I got this, this, and this. And then you watch it again several months later and you're like, how did I miss this, this, and this? Yeah, I've had that happen when reviewing evidence because, and I think it's because, like, in the moment, like, when you're first, like, reviewing evidence, you know, like, the, the investigation is still fresh on your mind. So you kind of have, like, the memory is more fresh of the actual investigation. But when you go a couple months and then you go back and like you listen or you're rewatching, it's almost like you're like, doing it for the first time. So you're not looking for specific things and that's how you're able to discover new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Add 30 years. <laughs> 30, that's being kind, you know. No, that's a bit. Oh, 30 or 31? Hmm. <laughs> so where can people find Elite Vixen? Um, you, if you literally just search us, Elite Vixen Paranormal, on any social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, we now have a clapper. I was Samantha after the last live that we did, uh, what, like last week or something the week before, um, Sam said we needed a clapper. So I went and got the clapper thing. Um, like I said, Facebook, that didn't sound right, did it? No. no I'm thinking clapper when you say clapper. I'm thinking of the clap on, clap off device from the, from like 80s, the 80s. 90s. Yes. Um, <laughs> My is so much more Okay. So, like I said, though, anywhere, um, yeah, if you just look for the addiction to the normal, you're going to find us. Um, 
Yes, you can message us at any time. Follow us all over the place and see our crazy, crazy adventures. And most of the links, if they gave them to me or I found them on my own, I don't know if Clapper's there. That is in the me, description. Then. So, well, you know, one thing you might consider, Chanel, is I had a couple of guests introduce me to. It's called Linktree. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that thing it's is. On... I forget where all I have it posted, though. I know. I think it's posted on our TikTok as our Linktree and. I think our Instagram, definitely on threads, but I don't have it like everywhere like I should. I think it's on our Instagram, isn't it? Is it on? I don't know. Now we got to check because now we're curious. Where right? is it at? Yeah, because I can add that. And that is such a time saver when sharing out, like, I have it on the top of my bio. It is yes. here's my link tree. And then here's the individual. So if you only want YouTube, here's the YouTube. If you want everything, just take the link tree. Save yeah. yourself some time. Yeah, I have it. It's actually it's on our Instagram. I have the link tree. Yes. I need to put it on the Facebook. I, yeah. It's not already there. I need to make sure I have it because that'll be a huge okay. time saver, especially when I have to deal with the clapper. <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly where Jed went with that one. <laughs> I can see it in her face. <laughs> yep, no, I need to add it on there. I'm gonna do it for this weekend because I'm gonna be doing like a lot of work for the team this weekend. So awesome. Well, I think it's a good time to wrap it up and I do appreciate you guys coming on. And unfortunately I didn't think about this when Abigail was still on. So unfortunately we'll have to be one short of it. But one thing I like to do is ask the guests of your experience in life, just in life in general, not paranormal, not anything else. Of your journey, what is one golden nugget you want to leave the audience with? Don't, like, learn to understand that you can't control everything. And just let it be sometimes. It is what it is sometimes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Jen? Always trust your intuition. Always. Always, always, that gut feeling is there for a reason. So, all right. Well, you heard it here. So, thank you to the chat room. Thank you to everyone who's watching and spirits that are watching. Thank you. And wherever you are in the world, make it a great day. Make it a great afternoon. Take each day and fill it with love and joy. And as they said, you know, trust your instinct, trust your gut, and find the freedom in letting go the things you cannot control. With that, good night, everyone. <laughs>